In this video, I'll elaborate the common methods of cost estimation, including the difference between conceptual and deterministic methodologies, the level of effort required, and when to use each of them. The information presented in this video is taken from Skills and Knowledge of Cost Engineering, which is a book produced by the AACEI, and it's a very reliable source of information. So starting with the estimation classes, we have five classes of estimate. Class 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And actually, what differentiates these classes from each other. We have two things. We have the primary characteristics and we have the secondary characteristics, which means what makes a class three, for example, a class three. It depends on some primary characteristics and some secondary characteristics. And the primary one is the scope definition. This is the most important characteristic that differentiates these estimate classes. And we have also secondary characteristics, which are the end use and the methodology and the expected accuracy and the efforts required for the preparation. So when we take a closer look here, we have the estimate class. So when we are talking about class five, the scope definition will be between 0% to 2%. So we don't have the scope defined yet. And this class can be used for screening or feasibility as an end usage, which is a secondary characteristic. Class four, for example, the scope definition will be between 1% to 15%. And this class can be used for concept study or feasibility. And the class three, the scope definition will be 10% to 40%. And this can be used for budget authorization or budget control. And class two, the scope definition will be between 30% to 75%. And it can be used for control, bid, or tender. And the class one, the scope definition will be between 65% to 100%. And the end usage will be check estimate or bid or tender. So the scope definition is what? It's the drawings, the specifications, and all the project information that we need to produce a very accurate estimate, for example. So if this information are not available or not defined enough, then you cannot produce a class one or class two estimate, but you can maybe produce class three, four or five, something like that. So the take from here is that the primary characteristic is the scope definition. How well the scope of the project is defined? What are the level of information available about the project? This is the primary characteristic to identify which class of estimate shall we use. The secondary characteristics will be the end usage. Why do we need this estimate? What are we going to do with this estimate? And the methodology, which we will be seeing in a moment, and the expected accuracy and the efforts for the preparation as well. So as we can see here, the estimation classes as per the AACEI, which stands for the Association of Advancement of Cost Engineering International, they have five classes of estimate, class five, four, three, two, one. But as per the ANSI, which is the American National Standards Institute, class five will be equal to something that is called order of magnitude estimate. Class four and the class three will be equal to something called budget estimate. Class two and the class one will be equal to something called definitive estimate. And as per the ANSI, the accuracy of order of magnitude, which is class five as per the AACEI, will be between minus 30% to plus 50%. And if we need some numbers, if a building, for example, that is supposed to be a 50 million, when you are doing a class five or an order of magnitude estimate, you can end up with 35 million or 75 million instead of 50 million because we have an accuracy range of between minus 30 percent to plus 50 percent if we are talking about class 4 and the class 3 which is a budget estimate we will be looking at a range of minus 15 percent to plus 30 percent so if the building is supposed to be 50 million you might have an estimate of 42.5 million or you can have an estimate of 65 million and if we are looking at class 2 or class 1 which is a definitive estimate estimate we have everything defined and the scope is very clear for us so we can prepare very accurate estimate which ranges between minus five percent to plus fifteen percent so if the building is supposed to be 50 million you can have an estimate of 47.5 or 57.5 which are very close to the 50 million itself so this is how the aacei and the ANSI classify or give us the classification of estimates or the estimation classes so when we come to the estimation methodologies we have two estimation methodologies we have the conceptual methodology and we have the deterministic or the definitive methodology and what are these two and what they depend on this is what we'll be seeing now but first of all when to use the conceptual and when to use the deterministic so the usage of any of these will depend on the end usage of the estimate why do we need this estimate is it just a screening or feasibility study or it's a bid or tender why do we need what is the 
end usage of the estimate and also the amount of time and money available how many resources you have to sit and quantify everything and estimate everything and get quotations and all of that also the tools and the data available and the level of project definition what are the documents available do you have everything specifications drawing soil report and all what you need to produce a high accuracy estimate or you have just a concept or something like that so the level of project definition is one of the things that will determine which methodology are you going to use conceptual or determined deterministic. So the conceptual methodologies, first of all, these methodologies uses historical data and statistics because conceptual means it is not accurate. You are just doing some parameters and you are using some historical data and some statistics and all to produce an approximate value for this project. And as we said, this is very useful when the scope definition is very low or we don't have the scope defined fully yet. So we can use historical data and statistics. Also, it requires efforts in data collection, but it doesn't require effort in quantity takeoff or gathering the prices from the market and all of this stuff because we will be using all the projects or historical data to derive the price of this project or the cost of this project. So it requires efforts in the data collection from the past or from your previous project. And also it depends on factors and algorithms as we will be seeing now. So it doesn't depend on very accurate estimates and calculations and accounting and all of that. No, it depends on some factors and algorithms so when we come to the deterministic methodologies these methodologies will depend on actual project data not historical data no we have the drawings of the project the specification of the project itself so we have the actual project data and that's why we can make a deterministic estimation and also it has a very high degree of accuracy because you have all the scope defined in front of you all you have to do is to price it well or to estimate it very well and you can get a deterministic estimate and also it takes long time time and the effort to prepare because you will need to prepare a BOQ and you will need to get quotations and incorporate everything and all of that. And if we are meeting for the first time, I am Ahmed Adel and you are watching Cost Engineering Professional. And here I help you develop the required skills and enhance your knowledge to elevate your cost engineering career. So if this is what you want, you are in the right place. This channel is for you. So let's talk now about conceptual estimation methodologies. So the conceptual estimation methodologies used for class five and the class four and sometimes class 3 estimates and they are also referred to as order of magnitude as per ANSI as we have seen previously. So these are the conceptual estimating methodologies and they can be used for establishing an early screening estimate or a proposed project. So they are being used in the very beginning when you are just screening the project or you are establishing a feasibility study or something like that and you can also use them to evaluate the general feasibility of a project, screening project alternatives and also establishing preliminary budget. So because they are approximate methods or methodologies, they use them only in the very beginning when the scope is not very well defined and you can use them for screening, evaluating the general feasibility of a project and project alternatives, budget and all of that. So what are the conceptual estimating techniques available? We have the first one, the end product units, which can be used for projects like multi-story parkings, hotel or hospitals, something like that. So what you will do in this methodology, you will go to an old project of a hospital, for example, and you will count the number of beds in the hospital and what was the project value. So you can arrive the bid value, one bid value, and you can apply the same bid value on the project that you have in hand today. You just multiply the bid value by the number of bids that you want to make right now and you will get the price of this project. So this is the end product unit. Similarly for hotels, how much is the cost per room in our previous hotel project? So today if we have thousand rooms, we will just multiply thousand by the price of room, you get the price of the new project. Also physical dimensions like length, area, volume, and physical dimensions, it can be used for roads or residential buildings. For example, I did in the past a road of 50 kilometers and it costed this much. So the cost of one kilometer is this much. So today, if I want to do a road of 100 kilometers, you can just multiply the cost per kilometer in 2000 and you get the price something like that. The same thing is used for residential buildings or villas. What was the built up area in the past and how much was the cost? So if I am making another built up area, I'll just get the square foot rate or the square meter rate and so on and multiply it by the new built up area that we have to establish the contract price or the 
approximate conceptual estimating price and we have also capacity factors and this is similar to end product unit and physical dimension but with non-linear relationship and we have also various ratio or factor methods which is like uh, an example for that can be the FCUs or the AC equipments where you can just say that the cost of fixing an AC unit along with all the ducts and the grills and everything required will be the equipment cost multiplied by some factor that you can establish from a previous project and we have the parametric modeling and actually capacity factor is an example for that parametric modeling so these are all conceptual estimating methodologies as you can see because they are not giving you an accurate cost estimate for the project that you have in hand but they are giving you an approximate value only which can be used for as we said preliminary budgeting or feasibility study or project alternatives and stuff like that when we come to the deterministic or definitive estimate, of course, this is a much higher class, class one or class two, and this requires detailed estimation, which is usually involves the following steps. You will need to prepare the project basis and the schedule. And by the way, most of the videos on cost engineering professional is related to the deterministic estimation methodologies. Also, you will need to prepare direct, indirect and head office cost estimate. You need to prepare the sales task and the duty estimates. You need to prepare escalation estimate project fee estimate and prepare cost risk analysis and the contingency determination and you need to review and validate your estimates so basically you are doing everything in this estimate to arrive the most accurate value possible and these two videos here are examples of deterministic estimates so you can watch them and learn from them how it looks like and thank you so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next video